So one of the other direct comparisons we can do between Power BI and Microsoft Excel is when it comes to performance and the size of data it can handle. So what I've done is I've done a good search on the internet to try to find a data set that's massive, that's also easy for us all to understand. And so there's this fantastic site called Gaggle that's got, Kaggle, sorry, it's got loads of uh, open source data sets. And I found one here that's been supplied by Nikol Nayak and it's got 5 million song lyrics. It's currently, it's a CSV download, it's 9.2 gig, and there's obviously there's 5 million rows in here, and the type of information in here is title, tag, the artist, how many views it's had, features, lyrics, and then it's obviously got a unique ID as well. So I've downloaded that, and just before I recorded this, I've, I've sorry, I've downloaded and extracted it onto my hard drive. So in download, so you've got DS2, this is it. I'm trying to open it in Excel and that's been running for quite a while. It's way too big. It's gonna kill the memory and it's not gonna open it. And the reason for that is one, it's Excel doesn't handle really large data sets and it's also limited at 1 million. So it's struggled with that. So Excel's a big no-no. We can't actually do anything with that in Excel. And even if it was a million, trust me, it's going to be so slow. So the next part is, can Power BI handle 5 million rows? So the way we do it is we get the CSV option. Then we scroll to downloads. Whoops, downloads, DS2, open it up. So Power BI itself is going to take a long time to bring this data in. So it gives you a preview here. So you've got, as we expect, the ID, the lyrics, the features, the views, etc. And I'm going to go load that. And now what it will do is it will take a long time to load it because what it's doing is it's bringing it into its internal database, compressing it and making it ultra fast. So that's going to take ages. So I'm going to pause the video now because obviously, as we saw, it's 8.9 gig and it's bringing it in. Not brilliantly, so that's probably going to take about 10 minutes. So I'll pause this and I'll see you right back when that's loaded in. Right, welcome back. That import took around about 30 minutes to do. So it took a little longer than I thought, but it's it's got 5.9 million rows to look at. So this is the screen that you land upon after the import's finished and so just to prove the data is in. We have 5,900,000 odd rows in here. And the information we've pulled in just to refresh our memories, we've got the artist features, not really sure what that is. We've got an ID, we've got the lyrics for the song, we've got a tag, so that's basically whether it's uh, hip hop or pop, title of the song, number of views, and then the year the song was released. So looking at that, one of the things we probably want to see is the most popular artist. So let's drop a stack bar chart on. And uh, let's make it big. Uh, let's pop the artist in and then let's pop the views in. So there you go. That's nearly 6 million rows and Power BI has done it just like that, which is incredible. Does it get slower? Actually, we had another one on. Let's pop this one on here and let's have a look at the most popular song title. So let's go title, views. No, really fast, which is amazing. So one thing we might also might want to do is let's let's see if it slows down with slices. So one of the things possibly we'd want to do would be add a slicer on for tag. And let's just make that horizontal so it's nice and tidy. There we go. Drop these down here. Right, let's see if filtering this is slow. Wrap, no, pretty quick, pop, pretty quick. So that's rapid, really cool. What about if we add another slicer on for year? Whoops, yeah, let's pop that one in. There we go. So for some reason, some of the songs don't. I've noticed I looked at the data earlier. Some of the songs don't have actually a year, so they default it to one. So we want to look at everybody after like 19, oh gosh. It's easy to type it, isn't it? 1960. There we go. So 
the most popular artist is actually the Beatles. Now, I guess the reason for that is that Drake's in here, but the Drake is the most popular artist. But when you actually incorporate Yeah, actually, you know, ignore me. It's just because I've got that selected. So Drake is still the, not the most popular artist between 1960. So if you want to go, let's try and pull that back and do like 19. Who's the biggest artist in 1970? Let's see if that slows it up. Yeah, so 1960 to 1970, you're definitely into the Beatles, Frank Sinatra, Bob Dylan, obviously, as you'd expect. The most popular song, Fly Me to the Moon, which I think is a Frank number. Yesterday's the Beatles, Let It Be. So, yeah, it all looks good. And it's, as I'm sure you agree, it's lightning fast, which I'm absolutely blown away with. So just remind, that's 5.9 million rows. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to try and publish this up to the Power BI service. Now, I'm on the Power BI Pro license. And so that means that I can only store one gig of data. Now this data set is running around about eight gig. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the video now and I'm gonna upgrade my license to the Power, Power Premium per user license, which is $20 a month or 20 pound a month, I need to look. So I'll just pause the video, upgrade that. Now let's see what this does. If I go and put the whole lot into the Power BI service, does it slow it down? Is it good? Uh, what happens if you know other users need to access it? So I shall see you back in the next part of the video. Okay, welcome back. So I've just published that Power BI report into the Power BI online service and now I'm viewing it with inside of Microsoft Teams. So let's go to my workspace where I actually uploaded it to. And it was obviously about lyrics. I called it lyrics. So let's go and have a look. Is it fast? So one thing I did before I published it, I forgot to expand these filters out. So let's expand them out and you can see that is absolutely lightning. Let's do the same query as before, 1970 to 1980. In fact, it was 1960 to 1972, but never mind. Quite interesting. Queen were the number one band. Uh, so, and you can see Bohemian Rhapsody was the number one tune. And what's kind of nice, if you click on the actual song, then it shows you what proportion of all of Queen's hits that made up. So Bohemian, Bohemian Rhapsody was massive for them, which is brilliant. So as you can see, that is lost none of its speed whatsoever. If anything, it's faster. And because it's in the Power BI Online service, I've got all the beauties of being able to share it into PowerPoint, export it to PDF, analyze it in Excel, although that probably would struggle because there's so many rows. Uh, I can share it wider so I can send a link to the team. And then of course I can going and embedding in places, so SharePoint Online, I can even put it on a WordPress site if I wanted to. Uh, so there's plenty of options there for me to do that. Now I've got it into the service and it'll also be available on my phone, which is just brilliant. And it'll be lightning quick on the phone as well because it's not downloading the entire amount of data, which is fantastic. Anyway, hope that proves that Power BI is really a very, very cool tool when it comes to large data sets that Excel can't handle. Welcome back, and I hope you're suitably impressed by the performance that Power BI can give you with millions of rows worth of data. So the next demonstration I wanted to uh, show you is around about mobile reports. So in this one, it's, it was crucial I actually pre-recorded it because it was really hard because it required me to show the desktop version and also the mobile app of Excel, the mobile app of Power BI. So I'm just going to get straight into it, hand over to my pre-recorded self, and hopefully you'll love the mobile app that Power BI offers. Okay, so I hope you found the content that you've uh, been watching really useful. And more importantly, I hope you're really, truly excited about starting to learn Power BI. And I really do hope you think that I've got to get rid of my Excel skills and I need to move to Power BI. That's not the case at all. They complement each other beautifully. And like I've mentioned in previous uh, videos, it's really a very common use case to bring your Excel data into Power BI. Power BI is all about the reporting side of it, so they are complementary. If you do want to continue your learning journey now and you want to get a really, really great grounding that takes you from novice to fully competent in Power BI, then I really strongly recommend you stay around for a couple of minutes because we've got an incredible offer coming up. So we run the Cloud 365 Academy. 
It launched in March 2022, so it's not very old, but we're already at 3,000 members. So we've got members in there that are enjoying not only Power BI content, but they're also learning the rest of the Power Platform and also technologies like Microsoft Teams and SharePoint. It's the place where we've placed all of our training content so that people can enjoy it going forward. So it's a site like Facebook without the ads where you log in, access all the content, and you can also uh, network and ask questions with your peers because we've now got 3,000 members nearly in there. So what is Nick's Workshop? Nick's Workshop's already been loaded into the Cloud 365 Academy. And what Nick does is he's covered for nearly five hours data modeling for a start. So data modeling, as I've mentioned in previous video, data modeling is really important because Imagine you've got an Excel spreadsheet and you want to bring that Excel spreadsheet as a data source over into Power BI. What that happens under the scenes is that gets put into a model. And if you've got other data sources like SQL Server that you bring in at the same time, that will also get put into the same model. So it's really important you give Power BI some great tips, hints, and tell it things like you you know columns. This column here is a da is a date time column, and this column is an integer, etc. It'll do its best guess, but you need to tell it these things, and you need to do this concept of cleaning your data. And if you do that, and I, I promise it's not hard, and Nick teaches it really well. But if you do that, it just makes your reports so much easier to build because your data's more fit for purpose from when you start creating your reports. So Nick teaches you all about that and how to clean your data. Then he goes into a full whistle-stop tour of all the fundamentals of Power BI. So he teaches you everything you need to learn to get started with Power BI. So if you imagine you've got like a, a little dude sat on your shoulder, as you were sat using Power BI, that would be Nick teaching you how to navigate around the Power BI desktop, what the services are, and also teaching you more in depth of some of the concepts I've been telling you about previously. And Obviously, the key thing you really want to do when you learn Power BI is you want, to, you want to get up and running really quickly. So Nick goes through, he teaches you how to create a report, and then once you get into the Cloud 365 Academy into Nick's workshop, you can also download the data sets that he teaches to go along. So you can actually do this as you're going along and follow along as Nick's teaching you. And there's obviously much, much more in there. So as I've mentioned, you also, as part of this really special offer, you're gonna get lifetime access to the Cloud 365 Academy. So you'll, as soon as you've purchased, you're gonna log into the Academy, you'll get Nick's workshop, but you're also gonna get 318 training sessions from 10 of our previous virtual summits. And we've even got in there an Excel and Power BI summit, so you'll get all of the content of that. You'll get all of our beginner trainings. So obviously if you don't understand what Power Automate and uh, Power Apps is, there's beginner content there, there's beginner content on SharePoint. So we've got all of Microsoft 365 pretty well covered. You can also network with your peers, ask questions, ask questions of us. There's also courses in there, which I think I've got a slide on. Yes, I do have a slide. So we've also, we, we've also realized there's a need out there for, to create really short micro courses, the 20 minutes long. And the, the purpose of them is, if you don't know anything, you're like you're struggling to work out what Microsoft 365 is, take the, micro, the Microsoft 365 micro course and you'll have a really good uh, whistle-stop tour of all of the big products that you need to know. So it's like all the headline features and where you'd use what. If you do pass that one, there's also a, a great badge to get hold of inside of the Cloud 365 Academy. We've just done exactly the same for the SharePoint Foundations and we're gonna do the same for all of the products. So you can expect Power BI to be done. Power Automate, Power Apps are going to be in progress as well. So look out for these micro courses that get dropped in because if you've got 20 minutes spare, they're a great way to go put some light bulbs in your head. So you'll get those as well. Right, so how much is it? So if you added up everything I've mentioned today, which is Club 365 Academy Access, the courses, the and more importantly, the Power BI Fundamentals Workshop and the 318 sessions, it'd be $391. However, today we're offering it at $27. Now, you're probably going to ask, why is that so low? Well, the reason being is simply because if we feel we do a great deal with you now, because you've probably never heard of Cloud 365 and you certainly won't trust us by this stage. So our thinking is, how can we get 
you trained up on Power BI as quickly as possible and also gain that trust. Because over time, over the next few years, we're going to be releasing lots more workshops. We're going to be doing more advanced and go deeper into Power BI. And at some point you might go, well, I actually trust these guys and I would like to, to purchase that. So it's our way of getting you into the academy, getting you to trust us and getting you the skills you need straight up. So we've purposely priced it so low just to uh, excite you and get you in there. So once again, it's only $27. There'll be a button around this video somewhere, which has probably got a countdown on it. Click that. And then what will happen next, you'll go into the sales page that will tell you everything that is uh, Nick covers in his workshop and a little bit about the academy. And if you feel you want to purchase that stage, you just click the red button, takes you to the checkout, fill the checkout in. And then it takes around about five minutes to get you into the academy. Once you've got your username and password, get in, and then you'll be able to get to the 318 sessions, start posting on the academy, and then also more importantly, get your Power BI workshop and start learning Power BI. So that's it for me. I really do hope I can give you a warm welcome and a virtual handshake when you come into the Cloud 365 Academy, and I hope to see you in there. See you later. Bye-bye.